So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. I'm Sherry Thickpin with Paul's Pastry Shop in Picayune, Mississippi. We want everybody to stop by and see us. We're off I-59 at exit 6. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. All right, well, this is our production area back, uh, back here. We mix everything from scratch every day, and everybody comes in and has lots of work to do. We're so happy to be a part of our community and the Mississippi Gulf Coast and the Mississippi Sea World. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast.
One, 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 two, one, two, two, one, one.
check one, two, three, one, two, three.
The weekend is almost here, but there's work to be done in Baton Rouge. The Seawolves are in town to take on the Zydeco in a divisional showdown next on WBRZ. And with that being said, we say hello and welcome you inside the broadcast booth alongside Thomas Hefferman, Lily Gale downstairs. I'm Joseph Hurtado. Glad you're with us here for this one. Thomas, a big game here for the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Coming off an 0-3 start last season or last uh, last weekend against the Columbus River Dragons. Trying to turn things around today here against the River Dragons. Uh, we definitely made some moves. We acquired some uh, defense, a couple guys on offense. Uh, made some changes they're looking good during practice they've been gelling really well coaches got them on a regiment uh strict schedule and uh they've been doing well one of the things to one of the things to note here between these two teams right now the zydeco over 13 on the power play they struggled last weekend now they're up against the most penalized team in the fphl the mississippi seagulls so things got to change right now and it's a tough matchup here watching between these two teams something's got to give for the zydeco on their power play yeah, we got to get a goal. we got to get a goal, and uh, I think we'll have plenty of opportunities here to do it since uh, the Seawolves like to take penalties. We'll see how it goes. Well, they did bring in some new additions, Don Carter Jr., okay, another SPHL player, and on top of that, they also brought in Curtis Hansen as well, and Noah Robinson to really add to this offense and as well their back line. So some players tonight that are going to be making their debut with the Zydeco, so trying to help this offense get things going because they struggled again last week on offense, scoring goals, and the defense too, giving up 51 shots in two games. Yeah, definitely. Smith is very vocal. He's got size and speed, and Hanson is just a lot of a lot of speed and offense. Well, we're gonna set nice it down. Hands. We're gonna set it downstairs with Lily Gale, who's ringside. Lily. Thank you so much for that, Lily. As we get ready to go here for today's game between the Mississippi Seawolves and the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Baton Rouge coming into this game at 0-3 on the season. Lined up against their cross-division rival here in the Continental Division, the Mississippi Seawolves. Mississippi 2-1-1 on the regular season. Coming into tonight after starting out the season 2-0, the Seawolves lost their last two games. They entered tonight coming off a 5-0 loss against Port Huron on the road, erasing a three-goal deficit in the second period. They took a late lead in the third period, but things kind of unfolded for them after giving up a late power play goal with 14 seconds left to go. As though for the Zydeco, struggling in the first three games of the regular season, their home opener, it was spoiled by the Columbus River Dragons after 20 years of hockey not being played here. And they're raising Canes River Center, all spoiled by the Columbus River Dragons. So a tough start for the Zydeco in their first three games. But tonight, a new challenge against the Mississippi Seawolves looking for their first win of the regular season. As we are underway, glad you're with us on WBRZ and YouTube Live as a puck is dropped and that one just sent wide of the cage, picked up down low behind the net. Working this one out high to the point. That one took a deflection on the way through. Getting a piece of that one is Shepard. And we get our first whistle of the night already. Just a few minutes into, or a few seconds into the game. Already looking like a new team. As far as defense, that clean breakout. Transition to offense. With Rogers with a shot on net. Looking good, looking good. Baton Rouge, nine goals in the weekend series last weekend. They have 16 again. So minus seven goal differential as lining in for the attacking zone faceoff this time. Brendan Hussey picked up goal last weekend in game three against the Columbus River Dragons as the Seagulls win the faceoff and they'll just put this one back onto the far side corner out to center ice and 
Columbus trying to get control here, rather, excuse me, the Seawolves trying to get control and picked up out at center ice. Here comes Philip Wong cutting in, lost the handle, and now what's played on here by Curtis Hansen, one of the new additions to this Zydeco team, just signed to the team earlier today. Playing in his first career game in the FPHL tonight at 25 years old. He played 56 games in the SPHL, picked up eight goals, 22 assists, 30 points overall. As Wong in a race back in after it, they're met by the shoulder of Don Carter Jr. The two collide up along the far side boards. Our goaltender tonight, though, for the Zydeco in Greg Hussey. An 0-1-1 record, gave up five goals in the only game he started. Maybe a 2-on-1 if they can hurry. MJ Graham trying to reach in for the puck, lost the handle. It comes back around here to the near side for Sam Turner. Forcing this one back down low below the goal line. Turner able to adjust and get right back on it. Chips it ahead to the open winger, and out come the Seawolves on the move. Coming out right to left, this one just all the way back on out from neutral ice and allowing the Seawolves to reorganize. Yeah, Coach McLean's got him going in with the two man uh, forcing the uh, forcing the defense to try to make a mistake here. Now that's center ice now for the Seawolves to take over. D to D pushed onto the near side. Mississippi coming into this game, 19 goals for on the season, 18 against. It's a plus one in terms of goal differential. Try the centering pass and it's going to be worked all the way back on out to dead center. Played here on the near side boards. The Seawolves when they Score the first goal of the game. They are 2-0. Long lead pass ahead. Here come the Seals to the backhand. That time it's held on to by Hussey, who's able to make the save. Miracos that time with the shot. Big hit by Haskins. Ready to get back. It's great hustle. Michael Haskins, a former Mississippi Seawolf, played with them last season. Hasn't scored a goal in over 38 games, Michael Haskins. His last goal came on December 15th of 2022. He played 37 games last season with the Seawolves. And now here with the Zydeco against his former team. This shot on, took a deflection back off the glass. It'll be pushed back around, and it's worked all the way to the point. Zydeco looking to get control. This one pushed out as far as center ice, and a hard check that time up along the boards. And the Seawolves have control right now. to reorganize as Idaho getting back in control of it. Austin Weber. That shot just goes wide again off the boards. This one dumped all the way back into the corner. Weber again back on it. He'll come back out the other side looking to set up shot. Puts it back out to the point. The shot that time on the way through traffic died down and Picked up here by the Seawolves. They arc it off the glass. Comes all the way back on down and through Aslan. What are the two twins on this team? And he's going to go back down for a nice. All these two teams will meet 21 times this season. Decided to go in. The Seawolves will meet 10 times here in this building. 11 times, though, in Mississippi. These two teams will meet later on back in Mississippi. Later on this month in November, they'll be the first home game for the Seawolves, says this one chipped in downstairs. Coming around the near side here is Hussey. Over the shoulder look and tried to drop back and out up top of the point. Hansen from his knees will play it across. Quick shot that time and a pad save made off of Shepard. Kicked all the way back on downstairs and forcing the Seawolves to reorganize to get started here on their breakout. Just about four minutes gone by here in the Opening frame between these two teams. No score right now. Glad you're with us here on WBRZ and YouTube Live alongside Thomas Hefford and Lily Gale downstairs. I'm Joseph Hurtado. Fourth game of the season here for the Baton Rouge Zydeco, a team who has not won a game yet this season. The only winless team right now in the FPHL. I'm looking to change things here tonight, Thomas. And here they come across out from their own zone. Trying to get that one back in. Took the... Stick off the puck of Robinson, goes back in for a hard check up along the boards. Players fighting for it now. It's worked back up the middle and now on the move. Here comes Helen. Helen looking, shot that time from the high slot and pushed aside by Hussey. Good D there by Carter. 
On the move here is Hanson, weaving his way back on through. Carter Jr. that time doubling back. Drive that time, able to get a stick on it was Michael Haskins, and the loose puck freed up for control. It was a solid play. Way to, way to read it. Haskins wound up for that one-timer. Way to be. He's working on it. He's trying to change that stat. He's trying to get that goal today. This one finally dropped all the way back on to center ice. Pushed up along the far side boards. The race for the puck. Wong couldn't quite get there. Just about five minutes gone by here in the opening frame. Boys are looking solid. Tape to tape passes. Yeah, right out the zone. And here they come. Speeding back on. It's Graham dropping it back. Try to force that one towards the middle. Good breakup. That time by the Seawolves. And out they come. One one down the left wing side. A good save that time by Hardy, who's able to hang on and gets a little extra too. Jackson Bond celebrating, thinking he might have a goal, but the official saying no. Never crossed. Way to sell it, but nope. Didn't happen. Yeah, one of the things, though, for the Baton Rouge Idaho, they've only had the lead through three games for all of three minutes this season. They took the lead in game two against Columbus. It did not stay long. So in that game after the goal from Mark Luis Grant's Mentis, playing with the lead has been tough so far here for this team. Yeah, it has been, but uh, tonight there's a lot of changes that are going on along with the bench, player movement. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize hungry. in your schedule maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. We talked about it earlier here in the broadcast is, is the penalty kill for the Seawolves in the power play for the Zydeco. Zydeco 0 for 13 through the first three games. They are tied for the league's worst power play in the FPHL. Lined up against a team, though, who takes the most penalties in the, during the regular season through the first their, for their first four games. The Seawolves, 156 penalty minutes, just about 39 minutes a game. Definitely Omnitech is a, an American-based uh, MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. the blocker hand here of Hussey and the Seagulls want it. They take control back out to the point. Far side drive, and that one just whipped around the boards. Now it's carried back on out from center ice. Here comes Weber. They'll play it across the far side, and glove-handed stop made by Shepard, who hangs on. Great play by Weber. Get that puck up, up the ice, make the move, make the pass. Solid effort. Yeah, so, like far, so far right now, the Zydeco with that shot out to three shots so far here in the First frame, and one of the things to note, though, tonight the Baton Rouge again out for two games without Marky Scran Mentis. Yeah, they're definitely going to be missing his speed and offense. Uh, but I guess coaches got to get a look at what the other guys are offering and try to put it all together. You know, and I would imagine that would definitely be including Marky's. So another attacking zone faceoff. Here for the Zydeco, 14-17 left to go. On the blocker hand here of Shepard. Zydeco win control here. Back out to the point again. Another glove handed stop made by Shepard. Joseph Shepard riding a 2-1-0 record so far. Has 15 goals against on the regular season. He replaced Liam Murray midway through the first period after making 13 saves on 15 shots last weekend. His fourth season in the FPHL between the pipes here tonight. This one played back into an open corner. Moved along to the near side boards. And Rocco's taking a hard check. 
As he's pushed up along the boards, he'll look to carry this one back out to center, try to play that one back ahead, and Hussey forced to move it. Weber gets a stick on it. He'll arc this one back in, slowed up along the boards, that time by Shepard getting to it. We'll set a change is made here by both teams as the Seawolves look to get back out on their breakout. Slowed up here at Bush Anderson, and now it's carried back across the line this way by Robinson. Robinson trying to swipe this one back out inside the circle, trying to get a shot off. That time was Hansen following up in front and held down that time by Shepard, who's able to make the stop. For the Zydeco averaging just about two and a half goals a game so far through their first three. A team who has struggled to score goals. They only have one goal so far in the first period of play throughout their first three games. They actually have allowed eight goals in the first period through their first three games. So one of their worst periods defensively and try to change things here is Hansen trying to drive that one to the front and couldn't quite get it there. And it's carried back along here by Leoso and thrown back in deep. Slowing it up is Hussey, playing this one back off the boards and allowing the Zydeco to get started here on their breakout. Across from center ice, Hussey curl and drag, puts that one off of Shepard, who spills it and plays it right back around behind. Out come the Seawolves back out right to left, blue line opportunity to line, wind up, and that one caught the window, and it's pushed ahead now for the Zydeco in transition. The elevator pass all the way out to center ice and just bounces away from Hansen and followed up here by the Zydeco. Tough angle try, that one bobbled and bouncing right back into the net after the shot from Don Carter Jr. The Zydeco definitely looking like the team in control. Well, we got a little scuffle going on here. back out at center ice, just in front of the Seawolves bench. Pascal lining in for the faceoff. He loses the draw and carried back out here by the Seawolves just across the line until that puck was lost. And Moscow turns this one back off the boards. In control here for the Seawolves, whacked around behind, picked up, tried the centering pass, Haskins at the point, sending one that time through traffic, and had that one blocked, and out come the Seawolves. Maybe a two-on-one if they can hurry. This one slid back on forward, and a save that time by Hussey. It's a great effort by Scott Chirac to get back, help out the D, get a stick on the play. Solid effort, kid. right now who's getting the start tonight over Greg Harney. Harney was pulled last weekend in game three after giving up those three goals back in the first period. Shots now seven to six in favor of the Zydeco and that one will make it seven right there with the shot back on to Hussey. And he's able to hang on to it. But Thomas though just between so far tonight and going back to the game last weekend, the three against the River Dragons, it's a much different team right now we're seeing out of the Zydeco compared to last week. Yeah, they're really gelling. I mean, their practices have been looking great day by day, uh, moving things around and doing flow drills that really, uh, really consists of neutral play, neutral zone play, I should say. Comes to center, and now Wong back in at top of the circle. Curling drag in his shot that time. Stood up by Hussey with the blocker hand, and out come the Zydeco right now. Three across, in on the move. Skate to Blade, tried to drop off in hopes of Weber following up here on the stick here. George just spins one oh, score! Yeah, George. His first goal in his FPHL career, it's one to nothing, Baton Rouge. 
Number 14, Satori Carrizeros. Big goal, big goal. First goal, SPHL. Definitely exciting. One of the youngest players on the team. Good to see it. He's pumped. Wouldn't be surprised if you get another. Kara Georges with the first goal of the game here for the Zydeco. The 21-year-old gets his first of his career. And the Zydeco now are in the lead. One of the things we talked about, this team has only held the lead through their first three games for all of three minutes. They're 0-1 so far, win score in the first goal, though here's a sharp angle try and try to tuck that one in short side. Hussey able to turn that one away and out come the Zydeco on the move. Way back into the high slot, looking for a shot, and that one eaten up by Hussey, who's able to hang on to that. Ten fifty-seven left to go here in the opening frame. Glad you're with us here on WBRZ and YouTube Live. Brian at hockey here in the Rays and Kings River Center. Good turnout here in this game. Baton Rouge through the first three games of the regular season. They lead the FPHL in terms of attendance. Average atten attendance just a little over 3,000. This one could be worked along. Trying to drive his stick in there that time was Helland, and it's pushed out to center, and the Zydeco come back right in on the move. I see again, far angle try, rebound out, couldn't quite settle down that time for Hanson, almost had his first in his first game tonight. I like, definitely liking the new looks here in the offensive zone. They're cycling, they're looking for each other, they're communicating, and they're making solid plays to put it on net. And here comes Don Carter Jr. now, stopping and starting, draws a crowd, quick tip, looking opportunely from Moscow, and that one just rising high off the glass. The combination right now between Curtis Hans and Don Carter Jr. right now adding so far a lot of depth and we can see a lot more offense as compared to the prior week. Definitely. These guys are really, really know where each other at and have played together before at some point down the road and uh, have made their way back here in Baton Rouge. Yeah, both of those two are products of the SPHL. Hanson playing all of 56 games in the SPHL. Out come the Zydeco trying to get it on the move. Two-line stretch pass ahead. And here come the Zydeco back in on the move. Haskins, quick touch, trying to find Moscow in front and able to hang on to it. That time is Shepard as he'll hang on with 9.25 left to go on the first frame. Own face off here for the Zydeco. Moscow looking to line up for the face off, and we get a horn here. So, 9.25 left to go. We're going to step aside for a commercial break. Back in a moment after this. I'm Sherry Thickpin with Paul's Pastry Shop in Picayune, Mississippi. We want everybody to stop by and see us. We're off I 59 at exit 6. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Well, this is our production area back, uh, back here, and we mix everything from scratch every day, and everybody comes in and has lots of work to do. We're so happy to be a part of our community and the Mississippi Gulf Coast and the Mississippi Sea Wolves.
Kings and Canes River Center, period number one. If you're just joining us here on WBRZ and YouTube Live, 9.25 left to go here in the first frame. Zydeco right now with a 1-0 lead, courtesy of Kara Georges with his first of the season and first of his career. 21-year-old getting on the board here for the Zydeco. MJ Graham pushing one off to the far side. Crossing over, Moscow delaying, tries to force it in front, and that one just going wide. Wow, way to thread that pass by Moscow. Uh, Chirac just uh, couldn't get a handle on it, but they just keep keep at it, keep at it. You know, it'll, it'll come, it'll come. Yeah, one of the things, too, though, speaking about the crowd and the attendance, and the crowd feeds off a lot of the energy as Moscow delivering one back in tight that time for Graham, and he's gloved down that time by Shepard. But a very good turnout, though, tonight here, Thomas. The fans, it's one of the things we just were talking about, just going back from last weekend here tonight. The fans give off a lot of energy. They love the fast-paced hockey. They were waiting for hockey to finally return back here in Baton Rouge, and they sure do love it. Definitely, definitely accepting it and loving it. And they're showing so their support week by week. So out come the Seawolves. They'll direct this one back out to center ice. Pawed down that time by the Arakos. Weber this time is going to spin this one off the kick plate. Thrown back in on Hussey, and he's forced to make a save. Zydeco look to angle this one back out. Can't clear their own zone and push back into the near side. After it now is David Aslin. Trying to jar this one free back up the boards. And now it's carried back along here by Kara Georges. As Weber to his right, across the line, lets it go, and just pushing one wide of the 4 by 6 Hard check up along the boards. Here, George just leaned on this one, skipped all the way back on down the ice, and able to find it now here is Aslan again. One of the two twins here on this team. Ademo Aslan had the stick knocked out of his hands, and a shot fired back on from the outside of the perimeter from Noah Robinson and hung on to by Shepard. Shots 12 to 8 in favor of the Zydeco. trying to avoid dropping four straight games. So they draw one here by the River Dragons, or rather, excuse me, the Seawolves, and picked up and carried back on out to center ice. Lucas Helen, he'll just pop this one back in. Zydeco take over, can't clear again, followed up this time by the Seawolves. Brought back inside the zone. This one cycled back in deep. Following up here is Helen. Thrown back on out to center ice, and now here come the Zydeco back in across the attacking line. This one thrown back in off the left pad of Shepard, and it's finally forced back on all the way to center. The boys are communicating really well. Setting it up, getting shots on net. Can't ask for much more. Defense blocking everybody out. Looking solid here. Looking like a really, really solid team. I see able to hang on to that. Just, yeah, like we talked about, just a much different team compared to last weekend. And you can tell, like, some of the new additions right now to this team. Don Carter Jr., Curtis Hansen, you know, Robinson really adding some much more depth to the offense in terms of scoring. And, and like I said, just a much different team overall here on offense. Put off the pad, the rebound in front, buried in front. And the Seawolves tie the game here late in the first period. We're all squared up at one apiece. Just got to shake it off and just keep going. There's a little breakdown, but, you know, happens. you can't leave guys open like that. Back door, burn you every time. So that was Chuck Costello with the goal here for the Seawolves. He's riding a six-game point streak dating back to last season and now extends it to seven games here with the goal in this first period. Back on the move come the Zydeco. 
Carried along here by Graham, and they hit the blue line offside. So a faceoff will come all the way back on out to center ice. Six and some change remaining here in the opening frame. Moscow tied up now off the faceoff, comes back out to Graham, try to work his way through. And instead it's carried back along here by the Seawolves. Crashing back inside the zone is Koch. Diagonal pass out to the point. They keep it inside the zone. Long shot on the way from Turner, and that one's pushed onto the near side. Moscow follows up on it. Trying to work it on free. MJ Graham trying to get a stick on it. Now, didn't quite push that one on through the traffic. Koch again, looking, maybe a two on one. Try to take it back in stride, and that time just missing the cage. Good opportunity that time for the Seawolves. Defense will tighten up a little bit here. Forwards oh. need to stay with their point, man. And that one put home by the Seawolves. That's their. Second goal of the game. Now they have the lead. It's two to one. Yeah, it was a shot from the point. Tipping in front of the net. It's tough. You gotta box that guy out. You can't let him get a stick on it. Goalie didn't even see it. The second goal here in the first period for the Seawolves. Two straight goals here. And now they have the lead. Here is Carter Jr. He'll look it out high to the point. Weber walks the line, trying to get that one in front to Kara Georges. Laporte tied up, skate to blade, looking to play it. Leaned on that time and by Wong. And this one sent back on to the near side. Carter Jr. thought about pinching at the point. Instead, now it's guided to center for Jackson Bond, and he'll just throw this one back in, dump and chase, and the Seawolves making some changes right now behind the play. Now the Zydeco will get going back out left to right. Here is Weber, controlling across the line. Try to throw that one in front. Goes off the skate that time of Sam Turner and back into the crowd. Going down the final stretch here in the first frame. 451 left to go. Step aside. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienville Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. Welcome back after that TV timeout. 4.51 left to go. Back end here this first period. The last two goals belong to the Seawolves. After the Zydeco had the opening goal here in the game. Scored by Karen Georges. His first of his career end of the season. But right now the Zydeco have an attacking zone faceoff now trailing here in this game. He's joining us here on WBRZ and YouTube Live alongside Lily Gale between the glass. Thomas Heffernan, I'm Joseph Furtado. Here's a quick shot that time, follow-up chance, and they score! <laughs> Lee Rakos knocks it through and past Greg Hussey for a 3-1 lead now for the Seawolves. Their heads down, they cannot get their heads down on this. It's just... Uh... 
not the time to beat themselves up when they've been doing so much right. They're just a couple things they did wrong and got to move forward. Yanni well, Liracos with the third goal of the game. Leads this team in points with 10 coming in tonight. Now adds his 11th, his third goal of the year. He's third in the FPHL in scoring and actually second in franchise history with the Seawolves, 89 points. This is going to come all the way back on down for icing. So another attacking zone faceoff. So Thomas, despite the good start for the Zydeco scoring the first goal of the game, they've now given up the last three straight. Yeah, it's a tough break. Something they got to shake, but uh, I don't see them giving up here. Like I mentioned, this team for the Zydeco, they played their worst defensively in the first period. Coming into tonight's game, they've given up eight goals in the first frame. Now out to 11 with the three here so far in the first with just 425 left to go. So some tightening up to do in the opening 20 minutes of hockey. Boys just got to play a little tighter, a little smarter, but they're right there and they're in it. It's only a two goal deficit right now and the shots are 13 to 12 in favor of the Zydeco still trailing on the scoreboard. Going back to reorganize. Here's Laporte. Moscow swinging in front. Played on to the near side. Out to center ice. This one swatted back in. Chirac, first one in on the forecheck, meets the puck. Trying to cycle it back in on the exchange with Graham. Poking it down low. Chirac got it back in. Threw a shot from a tough angle on the backhand on goal. And Shepard able to hang on to it. So it'll set up another attacking zone face-off here for the Zydeco. Hining to take the face-off, Kara Georges. On the other end is Philip Wong. It's all set up to the right hand on the blocker side of Joseph Shepard. And this one carried out here by the Seawolves. Following up here is Costello. All the way low high to the point. Here's a shot that time off the right pad of Hussey. Worked back out upstairs again to the point. Bush Anderson trying to find it. Clip back in down low. Is Idaho forced to clear and relieve some of the pressure. Now off they come again left to right. Weber swats it back in. Around behind to the other side. Followed up that time by Costello. And this one just leaks all the way back on out to center. Seawolf's back in on the move. Bush Anderson trying to set the table and out of the reach that time of Wong. And Weber now on the exchange. He'll deal this one across the ice. And back in stride come the Zydeco. Weber again. Winds one up that time. Caught the knob of the stick. A Shepard. Good opportunity for the Zydeco. They spread it across now to Rogers. He'll flip this one back in. Shepard trying to slow it up. Comes behind the net. Thrown back along here by Turner. And able to guide this one back out. Thread the needle back on here for Koch. Koch slowing up, trying to drive a backhand in front, and now this loose puck freed up for grabs and on for Rogers. Rogers gonna slip it out to the far side. Two on one here for the Zydeco if they can hurry. Hussey driving hard to the front of the net, and that one's pushed out to the other side, and that time for Carter Jr. pinching at the point, puck gets through him, and now across the line, the Seals having to tag up right now, they're offside. On it here is Hansen. Stick handling his way across the blue line, looking for some room. Chopping this one down low, good chance and the opportunity. Great play. No Robinson got in the way of that one. We talked about these new additions bringing some offense right now. They've been showing it so far here through the first 20 minutes of hockey as we approach the final minutes here of the first period. Here is Robinson stepping out to his right. From the point, Haskins shaking bacon, now got it right back to Hussey from the top of the slot, and that's covered up. That time by Shepard, found it right near the crest of the jersey, a minute 37 left to go. 3-1 lead right now for the Seawolves. They have the last three goals in this game.
So the face-off one here by the Seawolves pushed out to the other side. Chirac back in on the forecheck. Right, Seawolves yeah, trying to clear back outside, outside and Chirac again causing some problems right now for the defense for the Seawolves trying to get it out to center. Pushed up here on the near side boards. Moscow now looking to advance it. Oh, he's Dragon. dancing. Dragging it through his legs, he'll feed it high. Haskins walking the line, lets that one go. Now Chirac will find it. Give and go down low with MJ Graham. Lined up that time by Wong. Graham trying to play it, skate to blade. So it came out in front. There. Moscow whacking at it from behind the net. Final minute to go here in the opening frame from the Raisin Canes River Center. Haskins push pass ahead on for Moscow. He'll look and feed it down low. And what a save that time by Shepard on Chirac. Chirac made a great play there, just yeah. going for it, putting on the boosters and just headed for it. Kid's definitely got jets. And he's got his hands back to normal, which is plus for everyone. What a chance that would have been to get one back within the final minute, says Laporte now crossing the line off sides. What a chance that time for Chirac. Could not answer, but 24 seconds left to go here in the first period. See a face off again out at center ice. Yeah, I've been actually excited to see Laporte out there. He's been uh, he's been with us since last week, but he wasn't able to play. Uh, but this week we got him in on the uh, lineup, and uh, he definitely hasn't disappointed. One last rush here, the final 12 seconds, carried back on by Hanson. He'll hang on, score! Nice five-hole goal right there, tweeners. Definitely not easy, but simple on the ice. Hard for goalies to pick up. Welcome to Baton Rouge. Curtis Hansen has his first in the FPHL. It's now a one-goal deficit with 7.2 left to go in the first. Not to be confused with the Hansen brothers. So the Zayat go get one back on the shot from Curtis Hansen. Slides it right between the legs of Joseph Shepard to bring the game back within one. Long shot that time from neutralized, kicked aside, and that is going to do it for the opening 20. So after a quick start by the Zydeco, getting out to a 1-0 lead early in the first period. We saw three straight from the Seawolves in this period, but Curtis Hansen registering one late with just about seven seconds left to go. And now it's a one-goal deficit in the lead for the Seawolves heading into the locker room in the second period. Yeah, uh, it's definitely going to be a good talk in the locker room. I wouldn't harp too much on the things that went wrong as much as the things that went right. Uh, they just got to focus on that and move on from there. Um, if anything to take from this period that uh, work hard pays off and it's showing. Well, the next 20 minutes coming up after this, we're going to step aside back here on WBRZ and YouTube Live in just a moment. My dad and I started merely printing. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. I'm Sherry Thickpin with Paul's Pastry Shop. 
in Picayune, Mississippi. We want everybody to stop by and see us. We're off I-59 at exit 6. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. All right, well, this is our production area back, uh, back here, and we mix everything from scratch every day, and everybody comes in and has lots of work to do. We're so happy to be a part of our community and the Mississippi Gulf Coast and the Mississippi Sea Wolves. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast.
Oil Coast Fire Stand, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. I'm Sherry Thickpin with Paul's Pastry Shop in Picayune, Mississippi. We want everybody to stop by and see us. We're off I-59 at exit 6. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. All right, well, this is our production area back, uh, back here. And we mix everything from scratch every day, and everybody comes in and has lots of work to do. We're so happy to be a part of our community and the Mississippi Gulf Coast and the Mississippi Sea World. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast.
get her. Welcome back in everyone here on WBRZ and YouTube Live. Period number two here just about underway. And a breakaway off the bat and another save that time on MJ Graham Shepard with a nice save to open up the period. But glad you were with us alongside Thomas Heffernan, Lily Gale downstairs. I'm Joseph Furtado and Thomas, the Zydeco got out to a quick start opening up the first frame. They scored the first goal and they gave up three straight goals after that. And we finally saw a goal from Curtis Hansen who answered late with 7.2 left to go in the first period and now trailing by one here in the second. Focused. That's what I saw in the locker room. These boys are all focused, chatting it up, ready to do what they need to do in order to win this period. Yeah, this is a Zydeco team who is still looking for their first win here of the regular season. They're the only team right now who is winless in the FPHL. Sitting at last place right now in the Continental Division as this one arced all the way back in, bouncing puck. Trying to dig it back out free from the corner. MJ Graham was bodied that time off the puck and it's ridden back out to center. Trying to get that one free and it's blocked down and out comes Licio with it, trying to force that one in front, and it's kicked along back out to the point, and Weber had a tough time handling it. Licio with it. Back in, worked along that time by Carter Jr. Blastering his man up along the boards, and the Zydeco looking to skate it back on out to center ice. On it comes here for Turner. D to D pass. This one stretched back out and kicked all the way back in off the stick, and some changes made here right now by the Seawolves. Followed up here by Wong. He'll drive his way in, try to poke it towards the middle, and now Wong again another wipe at it. This one kicked along to the outside, and now it's controlled here by the Seawolves. Looking to reorganize. This one thrown back into the far side. This will come all the way back down to Weising. Carter Jr. back on for it. He'll push it ahead now, and on the open man on the far side, it's Austin Weber. Three across here for the Zydeco. They enter the zone. Weber looking, firing that time, and He's ridden up along the boards after the save from Shepard and a little extra that time from Weber at the end after the whistle. So some changes made right now by both teams. The Zydeco out in front in shots, 22 to three, or 13 or 14, excuse me. Face off one back out to the point. Long shot that time on the way. Hussey trying to get to it. Chirac pushing one in front. And it's finally brought out here by the Seawolves. And talking about Chirac and just coming down to the end of the period, Thomas, and what an opportunity he had to make the game 3 2. But a better save from Shepard. We saw sprawling out right to left. It's great athleticism to make that stop and keep the game at that point at two. That was smart on his part to see the seam and go for it and jump up in the play and with speed. They just uh, were just off by, you know, by inches, but I mean, just timing, but the guys are really Back door look, score! Just like that play right there. Right on cue, we talked about him. Scott Chirac has his second and ties the game at three. That's a big play. Again, he just knows, he sees it. When there's an open space, he goes into it and is ready for that puck. Uh, that was a great pass also. Way to, way to look and uh, make the play happen. So the third goal of the game here for the Zydeco, they come out a few minutes into the Second period, they tie the game here at now two apiece. So rather Michael Haskins gets credit for the goal, so excuse me with there, but Haskins against his former team then puts one home. That'll be Haskins' first goal in 38 games and doing it against his former team, the Mississippi Seawolves, and played 38 games last year for them. 
Out from the corner, Weber try to push that in front. Makes his way back to the corner. Moskal chops at it. This one sent back on from the point, and MJ Graham in front. So they might be saying that Haskins got the goal, but they may need to review that again because from what I saw, it was definitely 19, but could be wrong. Yeah, Chirac went through the line first. But so far right now, it is a goal credit to Michael Haskins. And we're all squared up here at three apiece. So they draw one here. The defensives draw a win by the Seawolves. This one jammed to center. Just through Wong. Graham found it for just a second on the backhand. Carter Jr. pushing one off now for Moskal. And out comes Weber now with some help. He's got Moskal trying to get it to him. And now Weber finds it. Drops one back out high upstairs. This one kicked along. Graham trying to fight for possession. Instead, now the Seawolves get control out of their own end. And they'll push it back on out. And ahead now here for Costello. Taken away by Carter, here he comes. Carter brings it inside the attacking zone, hit the bar and it bounced right back out. Almost had his first of the season, first with the Zydeco, but out come the Seawolves, Carlin drag, and a nice save that time on the adjustment from Hussey. Back and forth action between these two teams. Pace starting to pick up a little bit here. Zydeco almost at 30 shots, not even midway through this second period. So far, it's been a clean game, too. Is right up the middle. Here come the Seawolves in. Backhander a save that time by Hussey on Alicio. Standing tall. Huge save there. Whole team was uh, flying the zone, thinking they had full possession, and went back the other way. Yeah, one of the things we've been seeing so far here in this game, a couple of breakaways have already been given up by the Zydeco, so one of the things they might have to clean up here as this game continues to progress. Yeah, just got to tighten up a little bit on the D. And uh, play a cool, calm, collective game, capitalize on the mistakes, and should be good. 15, 20 left to go here in the second frame. Just about five minutes gone by right now in a 3-3 game, if you're just joining us here on WBRZ and YouTube Live. Glad you're with us here in Baton Rouge, Friday night hockey between the Seawolves. And the Baton Rouge Zydeco, alongside Thomas Heffernan and Lily Gale downstairs between the glass. I'm Joseph Hurtado as I see going to hang on to that. And that's going to set up another attacking zone faceoff right now here for the Seawolves. Rocco's lining in for the draw on the other end with Moskal. He's flanked by the one of the Aslan twins right now and coming out with control here is Rogers trying to feed this one ahead off a skate. It'll come all the way back down, no icing. Shepard will play it to the near side, awaiting it now here is Chirac. Trying to push it in down low, Moskal tied up. Chirac works it free on the diagonal pass and Graham lets it go, rebound that time for Moskal. Shepard caught a piece. The net comes off the moorings here. 14.39 left to go here in the second period. We're going to step aside here for another TV timeout. Back in a moment. So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs. 
and we want to just keep you connected. Right now, Marcus Grant Dementes is not on the on the ice. He is currently not dressed out either because of a healthy scratch. We have so many new guys on the ice right now that they thought it was best to pull him for this game, but he's still on the team. Joseph? Yeah, Marcus Grant Mentis not playing tonight. He's been a fan favorite after the last couple games here. He's riding a two-game point streak, has goals in his last two games that he's played. Not playing here tonight, so this one chopped in deep. Moscow giving a hard check up along the boards that time by Pace. Scaled back along just through Moscow, out now up top and pinching here is Aslin. Try to work that free and now here come the Seawolves. Connor Lynn getting things started. He'll jam it to center and now it's Moscow again. Moscow looking. Dropping this one off in the high slot. Good move, backhand, shut down. MJ Graham trying to send that one upstairs and a good save by Shepard. Just to stay at it, be patient with it, and good things will happen, and they're doing it. Yeah, a lot more flow for the Zydeco team as compared to the last games, right? Seeing more puck moving off transition, defense to offense. Yeah, the team chemistry has really come together in a very positive way. And the Zydeco, after dropping their first three straight games, only nine goals to show for through those first three games, and now they have three here tonight in this game against the Seawolves. Now the face-off one inside their own zone. Here is Cudmore. Turn the puck over, now Wong try to get to it. Here for Hussey along the near side boards, drops the shoulder. He'll push it out to his right and allows the Zydeco to get started back out right to left from their own zone. And now here come the Seawolves with Wong. Entering along the left wing side, snaps one across. Here's a shot that time and that one goes right into the mesh. Askins took a spill into the corner. That shot coming from Chuck Costello. Extending his point streak now to seven games with a goal here today. So his line back out there right now is Wong, set to take the face off. He's flanked on the left side by Costello. You know, Thomas Tui are coming into this game just looking at the Seawolves right now, and they came in as the most penalized team in the FPHL with 156 minutes of penalty time through their first four games and haven't taken a penalty. We haven't seen any power play chance here tonight for either team. No, yeah, they've <clears throat> the left, I would, wouldn't say that the refs are allowing them to play, but they are. Uh, there are a couple that are questionable, but uh, yeah, I mean, still early in the game. I'm sure there'll be a power play here to see what we got. How about the athleticism from Hussey? Spin move by Moskal and that one Turned aside by Shepard, kind of piece off the shoulder. Hard check up along the boards. Moscow now from the goal line. They'll look and try to flip this one out and out. And jumping on top of it that time was Shepard. Spilled it, kicked all the way back on, and down it comes. That will come back for an icing call here against the Seawolves. Well, Hussey, after giving up, Three goals in that first period. Some really good saves right now we saw in that last sequence showing his athleticism. Boys are gelling. They're feeling it. They're talking it up, and they're just playing their game, having fun, most importantly. Kicked all the way back on out here for Costello. Tried the drop off, and nobody there that time for the Seawolves, and it's carried along here by Laporte. Driving his way down the left wing side. Laporte dips the shoulder. He'll come back around the far side and look for some help as he's just forced to play that one into traffic. Touch back in that time by Jackson Bond and changes made here by the Seawolves. Laporte again trying to find it. And now it's worked on here by Kyle Russell. 
Uh, the two line stretch pass ahead. Those will come all the way back on down and for another icing and a little extra two right there at the end. After the icing, a hard check by Blake Cudmore. We'll see if anything's gonna come from that. Cudmore, uh, he's like a cross with a coal miner and a railroadsman. The guy is jacked. Yeah, that was a hard body check that he landed right after the icing call. So now, does it come all the way back on down to the other side? So the line of Hussey, Graham, and Moscow will stay on out there. Carter and Rogers remain at the back point. Graham trying to stuff this one back in, and that one jammed aside, and Graham being taken down. Those two are gonna go behind the play right now, and we're gonna get a fight. MJ Graham doing battle in front, that time with Tyler Lambert, and he's drugged to the ground by MJ Graham. He's fired up. And Team Thomas, who didn't see too much fighting action through their first three games. Fans finally get another one here, and that's uh, seems to be what they might have come to see. Oh, these are the two crosstown rivals. You knew that was going to happen, and we're not done. A little extra Carter, two in front of the penalty box. The Rocos and Carter jawing with one another. Carter knocked the guy's helmet off his stick when he was skating by. Classic. Love the kid already. But how, how about... He's only been with us for a couple days, and he's... Our He's, he's funny, he's a character, yeah. How about the duel between MJ Graham and Tyler Lambert? Tyler Lambert, 6'1", 209 pounds, and on the other end, though, for MJ Graham, all of about 5'9", 194. A big height difference between the two, but speaking of MJ Graham, he plays this game with a lot of heart. He's a very vocal guy inside the locker room had the chance to talk to him, and he's ready to see this team start winning games, and he brings a lot of energy to this lineup and a lot of veteran leadership. Definitely a strong skater. Uh, he's not willing to back down to anything. I mean, as you can see there, he's called out, and he stepped up to the plate. And the two were going at it after the screen from MJ Graham in front after he tried to take the shot, and Push comes the shove and the two went at it and now the two are sitting five minutes for fighting and maybe a little extra two here right now as Lucas Helen drops his gloves, looking to go at it with Kara Georges and nothing's gonna come from that. Kara Georges kept the gloves on, didn't seem like he wanted to drop the gloves. though to say it does have these fans on their feet right now they do love the action right now and looks like we're gonna see a penalty here from this Helen dropped the gloves Kara Georges didn't want to jump in on the altercation so it might be a power play out of all of this for the Zydeco Honestly, though, Kara Georges, I didn't, he didn't even see that he was dropping his gloves until uh, what was happening. I, playing with the guy through camp, I, he, it's just not in his nature. I know he'll step up, but, I mean, you know, he's kind of caught off guard here as to why, you know. But, you know, they're looking for something, so they're going to go after the guy who scores the first goal. I mean, try to take him out of the game because they know if they get him out, yeah, there goes a the goal scorer for uh, Zydeco. This is mind games here. This is what... Uh, this is definitely what the Sea Wolves like to play. To which is why they have amassed uh, so many penalty minutes in so few games. So the Zydeco are gonna get a chance here on the man advantage on the five on four. They're 0 for 13 on the year, looking at their first power play goal. 
East Sea Wolves, the most penalized team coming into tonight. Their penalty kill at 77%. Moscow looking to set the table back down low. Gets it up top from Carter. He'll swing it this way to the left for Hussey. Downstairs for Rogers. Short side opportunity, nothing there that time on the shot. Holding at the point is Hussey. Trying to get it down low for Rogers, and the Seawolves look to clear only as far as center ice. Off the skate that time of Hussey. And followed up here right now by Irakos. Here off the turnover right now, and the shot is gloved down. Austin Weber placing that one right into Shepard, and the screen provided in front by Carter. Almost at the halfway point of period number two, 11.01 left to go here on WBRZ and YouTube Live. From Baton Rouge, Louisiana, some FPHL hockey here on a Friday night in Baton Rouge between the Zydeco and Seawolves. The first time these two teams meet on the season, they'll be battling it back out in a few weeks here later on in November for the first home game for the Seawolves. And a breakaway back out the other way, score! Jackson Bond, a shorthanded goal. Gives the Seawolves a 4-3 lead. That's tough to see on a power play. You never want to see that team score on a penalty kill, but at this point, you really got to tighten up and maybe shorten the bench a little bit here. Guys are making mistakes. Got to be penalized a little bit within the team to... Uh, make adjustments to get them, let them know, hey, you know, got to win this game, do what it takes. That is the third shorthanded goal of the season now for the Seawolves. The second shorthanded goal, the Zydeco have given up. They gave up one back last game off an empty net goal on the power play late in the third period against the River Dragons. But Thomas, one of the things that we were talking about in this game is the Zydeco giving up a lot of breakaway opportunities and this time it came back to cost them. Yeah, I just, uh, the defense is jumping up in the play, adding to offense, which is good, but it gets risky and you can't do it every time. But, I mean, these are the gambles that we got to take and we're willing to take um, that will pay off. Carter this time, going to walk it, trying to get it to Moskill. Couldn't quite play it, and that one just slipped away. That time from Licio, he almost escaped and had a breakaway of his own. Wow, that was rough. That was rough. That would play. That puck was right on the blue line. It didn't even cross. That was. Oh, they missed one on that. Well, we may have to go to Toronto, I guess, for that one. Even their doors are shut <laughs> on that one. 10 12 left to go here, midway through, just about here in the second period. He's Thomas Heffern and Lily Gale downstairs between the glass. I'm Joseph Hurtado. So we continue on here. The Zydeco, 24 seconds and counting left to go on the power play. Another penalty going to come here against the Seawolves, so it'll be a short five on three now. This As is this is good. This is great here. I mean, capitalize, get the one, get the two. I mean, five on three. I would like to say it's a cakewalk, but I mean, hey, just get the puck moving on the outer perimeters, then quick pass to the middle. Sam Turner going to head off to the penalty box. I'm going to say they're going to... Sam Turner going to the penalty box for a trip. And is Zydeco going to have a short five on three? 20 seconds left to go on the one minor to Helen until he's back out of the box. Now, the Zydeco, they have not seen a five on three all season long yet up to, through their first three games. And for a team right now who's struggling on the power play, this might be just what they need. Definitely. I, I, I predict it's going to be somewhere around the back door. Uh, they're going to work the sides and then, like I said, work the boards up and down and then try to get something down in the middle and uh, get a shot. But with a, the with a five on three, it's, it's, uh, it's a simple play just to make it try to go for the back door. So we'll see for that. Yeah, the Zydeco, though, they've only been around so far here as a team together in the locker room for just about two weeks. And the power play, again, struggling 0 for 13 through their first three games. But, you know, they might just need one goal to get their monkey off the back, right? You know, just find one here on a five on three and a chance to tie the game. Yeah, that's it. So right now, on the five on three opportunity here for just about 20 seconds until Helen comes back out of the box. Hussey right now, he's flanked by Carter on the left. Kara George is on the right. 
Rogers at the back end along with Moskow. So four forwards and a D right now for the Zydeco here on this power play. The Arakos set for the face off and the Zydeco win it. Out to Moscow. He'll look, push it down low, try to get that one in front, but a bad pass. The Rocco's gonna jam it just out to center to relieve some of the pressure. Eight seconds left to go until Helen's back out of the box. Kara Georges, who scored his first career goal in the FPHL, comes around for Carter. Quickly has to move it now for Rogers, trying to hold it down low. Turning chance that time for Kara Georges, and that one winds up into the mesh. And Kara Georges. And Helen still going back at it after Helen dropped the gloves early, which caused the penalty. And Kara Georges did not want to do it. He did not want to go. So Helen going to make his way back to the bench. So it'll be another face off again. Now a minute 33 left to go on the power play. 9.37 here in the second period. So the Zydeco now 0 for 14 on the season. And that's going to allow us to step aside here. We'll be back in a moment after this from Baton Rouge. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built... Through here, 9.37 left to go on the second. A 4-3 game right now. You see Wolves have the lead, but a power play. Still here for the Zydeco, 0 for 14. On the year now, they just had the five on three for just about 20 seconds, couldn't capitalize on that. So the woos still continue and still have some time on the man advantage here. Moscow shakes away to the inside, lets it go, missed the net. Came back out again, Kara Georges, but the net comes off the moorings. So it'll be another face off here inside the zone. As we just approach under the halfway mark of period number two. Try things again from the far side face-off circle. This power play unit continuing to stay on. Hussey, Kara Georges, Carter, Moskal, and Rogers at the back end. Four forwards and a D. Moskal, they'll swing it down low from the far side. Half boards, Hussey shooting that time through a screen. And Buck bouncing down low. Carter on the backhand. He'll set this one upstairs and allows Rogers to walk the line. Carter now in front. Hussey shot that time denied. So Moskal spinning off the check, trying to wheel that one downstairs again. Moskal, one more time, he'll advance it. Trying to work it across for Hussey and just bouncing over the stick. He'll cycle this one down low. Moskal backing up. He'll look, try to get it out up top. 45 seconds left to go here on the power play. Making changes right now here are the Seawolves trying to get some new personnel back onto the ice. And Wong now will clear this one down the ice and into an open corner. We'll take it around the other side for Rogers. Sends a pass ahead. Chirac doubling up on now for Moscow with speed. Moscow looking, trying to cut his way back in, forcing that one in front, but nobody home. That time for the Zydeco. This one taken around behind. Kara Georges trying to dig this one back out free from behind the net. This one rimmed along the boards and couldn't quite hold it that time as Carter, so he'll jump on it here and stick handle from his own blue line. Couldn't quite get it there. Moscow will wind up with it again. 
Back out to even strength now as the Seawolves kill off those two straight penalties and now we skate five on five. So 0 for 15 now on the season for the Zydeco on their power play. And tough to find goals for this offense. This one comes all the way back on down. Rogers racing in. He'll stop up, look for some room and try to skate it out. Instead, turn the puck right on over and had to come back defensively to knock that one away. That time from Licio. Back out to the point. Away that time from Weber. Looking to swing it back down low and this one just driven back off the glass, but a good keep that time from the Seawolves and and set it fine, center ice. Here comes Chirac over the attacking line. Here he comes as Laporte to his left. Chirac tried to swing that one in front of the net. And now the Seawolves get right back onto it. Pinkowski trying to drive his way through as he collides. The 219 Chirac in Pinkowski. Down to the later stages here in this second period right now. Still a 4-3 lead. The Seawolves in front, but here comes Weber. Has some help from Haskins, who had the last goal for the Zydeco. Shot, score! Hussey has goals in two straight games and evens this one up at four piece. Big goal by Hesse, right in the play, comes off the bench, screaming with speed, ends up with the puck on his tape, fire a nice snapshot in. So the tying goal right there for the Zydeco. Locking this game up here at four piece, and here comes Moscow, dropping back off for Hussey, and just overstepping the puck at the blue line. Castello with it, he'll cruise back in and a save that time by Hussey, sweeping it back out. And now here comes MJ Graham, hasn't been on the ice since the fighting major he served. Pushing that one back in, but offside is the call with 6.07 now left to go here in the second period. So some back and forth hockey right now here in this game on a Friday night. How do we get here to this point? The Zydeco opened the scoring back in the first period with a goal from Kara Georges. Then we saw three straight goals from the Seawolves and a late goal from Curtis Hansen to end the first period. And Michael Hansen picked one up here in the second frame. And now the tying goal from Hussey. And now it's where we stand right now in this one. Four piece for both these teams as Weber... Fires that one low off the pad from the short side, trying to bank that one back in between Shepard. Good pass across and tried to set up that time for Koch breaking towards the front of the cage. This one looking across, score! Joachim Nilsson with a heavy one-timer sticks it short side. And again, the Seawolves recapture the lead. This is going to be a fight, bitter fight to the end. It's just right there. You just, you know, it's tough. He was right on him. It's just lucky bounce. You know, <laughs> he's got to keep working at it, working at it. But this is, this game is going all the way down to the wire. The shots right now, 34-21 in favor of the Zydeco and Hussey. Giving up five right now in 21 shots. Here comes Chirac with it and... That one winds up into the mesh with 5.31 left to go. Scott Chirac, one of the smaller players here on this team, standing at 5.8. First season in the FPHL for Chirac. Spent his time playing ACHA Division II hockey at the University of Massachusetts. Won Nationals last season in the ACHA in his final season, so looking for his second of his career tonight had a few good opportunities he has the puck now gets it back down low pass out high here's Cudmore teeing one up and has that one turned away a pork getting acquainted down low and 
That one just goes off the skate that time. A shepherd could have been dangerous for the Seawolves. And love back down here by Hussey. At the fourth goal right now for the Zydeco on a two-line pass ahead. Laporte hits the brakes and looks for some help. Try to weave this one back down low out of the corner. Hussey stopping and starting. He'll turn up on a dime and try to lay that one back out to the point. This one finally plugged back in. That one goes out of play over the glass and might have caught somebody in the crowd right now at 4.42. Aslan with a class act there, apologizing to the crowd for uh, throwing the puck out towards him. Great guy. Well, 4.42 left to go. We go down the final. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back. Back in the game. Back in motion. Back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienville Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking. And uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. center ice joined by thomas heffernan upstairs with me the legale downstairs between the glass i'm joseph Furtado. glad you decided to come spend your friday night here watching zydeco hockey on wbrz and youtube live as last back into this second period winds down kara georges but offsides and again ellen kara georges the two starting to go after it now we're going to see another fight here it's going to be asland and helen the two get acquainted And some more coming in front from Richard Pinkowski as he takes down the other Aslan. So Adamo Aslan and David Aslan, two twins on this team, separated by all of two minutes, are going to take a seat inside the penalty box. I love it that the twins, these uh, the Aslan twins, just stood up for each other, for the whole team, the whole, the whole city. They just stood up for right now. That's the rivalry fight we wanted to see, definitely. Helen, the twins, and bringing some energy here to this crowd. So, Adamo Aslan going to the box as well as David Aslan. Two both hail from Montreal, so. They're going to be out of commission here for the rest of this second period. 4.28 left to go. Helen also taking a seat inside the penalty box with Minkowski. And, and Helen and Kara George, the two have been kind of going at it. Helen, who still wants that fight, it seems to be. It looks like what started all of this. He wanted that fight with Kara George. Kara George didn't want anything to do with it. And Aslan twins. 
Stepping up, dropping the mitts, and you can see the boos of the crowd right now. To Helens, as well as Pinkowski as they make their way down the runway to the dressing room. Well, the Aslan twins are also going to go ahead to the locker room as well. They get a standing ovation, though, this time as they make their way off. So it doesn't seem any penalties or power plays will come from all of that. We will skate five aside as it physicality and temper starting to flare a little bit here as we come down to the final stages here of this second period. All right, now that the circus is backed up, let's get back to hockey. This one dropped all the way back on down here for Carter. He'll follow up on it. Swung back off the boards and ahead here for the Zydeco. Graham trying to get it down to Moscow on the backhand and just rides that one over the top of the bar and out of play. Keep going, boys. Keep going. That's it. Those are the plays. Two on ones. Two on twos, cycling. Equality opportunity there for the Zydeco. Out to 36 shots right now here in this game. The 21 for the Seawolves. Uh, he's given up five goals on 21 shots. As the attacking zone face off. Taken out here by the Seawolves, pushed on ahead out to center ice and just overstepping now the Seawolves having to tag up and allows Cody Rogers able to work it back on out on the touch pass. Laporte tried the curl and drag and followed up here by Hussey. Tried to skip this one back inside the Seawolves zone and forcing them to double on back and reset. Up the right wing side and out it comes now from center ice here for the Seawolves into the middle, down low and getting a touch on it that time was Hussey. Cannot let that happen. You got to stick on guys a little harder than that when they're cycling in front of your net like that. Yeah, speaking of the two Aslan brothers, there's also another set of brothers on this team too. There's a nice move across from center ice. Rogers able to weave his way back on through all the traffic, but both the Hussey brothers out there. Greg Hussey, as well as Brendan Hussey. Two line stretch pass cut off that time by Parker Mosco, one of the fan favorites, trying to get his way back into the zone as he knocks his man down, takes the puck again. Going to be a penalty from that and a power play chance to come uh, here for the Seawolves. Oh, I don't know about that. that was soft. Uh, it must have been a makeup call or something they missed earlier because uh, that was pretty clean. I mean, Parker just muscled the guy off of the puck naturally, you know? What are you going to do? So I don't really agree with that, but we will test our penalty kill here. With Graham, Haskins. Yeah, Parker Moscow. Pussy. Parker Moscow, who takes a seat inside the penalty box and not a guy who takes too many penalties, but is going to sit right now. Second two minutes on the penalty. Number 13, so the Seawolves back to the power play. The first of the night at 14% on the year. The Zydeco standing at 71.4%. They've killed off five of 17 penalty kills so far here on the year. So the Seawolves looking to set up and try to double up on their lead going into the third period. Here's a shot by Wong, trying to find it through the traffic. Another opportunity and a good block in front that time. Getting it away at that one is Haskins, the former Seawolf. Scored a goal tonight against his former team and puts his body out there and blocks the shot. So he'll head off. Some new personnel jumping on over the boards for the Zydeco. I don't know. I think we're still debating on that goal, whether Haskins got it or not, because I still am going with Sherratt, but... Uh, so. Well, Haskins right now is the one credited and almost jumping away. Laporte might have had a breakaway, but was tripped up. He didn't even have to sell that. That was just a blatant trip. I mean, that was awful. Barakas at least didn't even try to hide what he was doing. Might have been sure. a saving we'll move, take it. though. Yeah, might have been a saving move with the trip. A smart play to not give up a breakaway and at least have to eat up a penalty. 
So now it'll be four on four, some more room to work with. That's where pinching goes wrong. So the Zydeco line up for the attacking zone draw. Graham straight back to Carter. Watch tightly at the hip that time by Turner. Sneaks it down low to Graham in front. And good opportunity to rock that time with the shot. See, this is what I like here. A little open, more open space, a little four and four, similar to roller hockey. I don't know you roller hockey fans out there. That's kind of the roots here for some of the guys that are out there today, tonight, I should say. Uh, just, uh, you, know, you know, a lot of offense, a lot of open space. We'll see what happens. Turning up the boards now here for Graham. We'll take it in down low. Graham tried the centering pass. Chirac tried to high point that and glove it down. And out comes Wong. Just inside the blue line. Sends one across the ice, just out of the reach that time of Bond. And now here comes Carter. Wheeling his way back out from center ice. Try to push it for Graham. Down the ice it goes. At a minute 35 left to go here in this second period. Comes back on over to the near side. Seawolf still inside their own zone. Carter hard that time in on the forecheck. And this one finally spun all the way back down the ice. Cody Rogers back for it defensively. Changes made here by both sides. And 20 seconds left to go until the Zydeco will be on a short power play. Rogers cutting in, tried the shot. And now it's going to come around for Hussey. You would not notice that Roger has actually been battling lace bite with his ankles. It's an excruciating thing to deal with when it comes to skating. Just uh, happens sometimes with new skates. The uh, lace gets a little too tight, cuts off a... Uh, Cuts off muscle, artery, vein. It, it's just, it's really bad. And then once you get it, it's just tough to work out. And uh, you trying to skate, you try to loosen your skate, and it's just, it's just, it's tough trying to get comfortable. So you got to give it to Rogers for sticking through it. Yeah, Rogers right now heads off, still looking for his first point here with the Zydeco as Weber wins the draw and paints it back out to the point. And the final minute to go here in this. Third period, Zydeco back to a short power play right now here for 35 seconds as Moscow legs the box. Here is Weber, he'll cut in, look straight back to Moscow. Moscow trying to force that one down low for Weber who is breaking hard to the front of the net. Weber tangled up down low and out it comes now here for Turner. Turner, he'll stretch this one back along the ice on the other side. All right, check up along the boards and now here come the Zydeco, maybe a two on one, Moscow. Joined by Hussey, Moscow trying to cut to the inside, and he was ridden off hard that time by Connor Lind. As he's double teamed along the boards. Hussey running in his man, final 10 seconds left to go here in this period. Seawolves work it out to center, one last opportunity. The Rocco's dropping off now. One last chance here for a shot, and that one's turned away by Hussey just at the horn, and that is gonna do it. For 40 minutes of hockey here in Baton Rouge. A 5-4 lead for the Seawolves heading into the dressing room again. And a lot of back and forth action, Thomas, between these two teams in that period. A lot of goals we saw, and decided to go after tying the game up another goal and now they're trailing right now they only had the lead back in the first period and have been trailing ever since yeah it's uh it's coming down to the wire here we got the last period definitely coach is going to have a game plan drawn out for them and they are going to have to execute it and tighten up on uh just a couple things but not not a lot to work on but just a couple things and uh just go from there and hope for the best and that's all you can do. So no Matthew Ferrinari tonight here as one of the head coaches on this Zydeco team. It is the lone bench boss tonight, Paul McLean. So any change you think he's going to be making inside the locker room tonight or going into this third period? Not much. I would say he might actually add that in the beginning we were really pinching up on the play. The defense was jumping in with the offense. But I think on this one, they're gonna probably might not go with like a more of a dump in, dump and chase strategy and keep the D back on, back on uh, D and 
not to pinch up as much. Well, two thirds of the way there here in this one from Baton Rouge, we're gonna step aside back in a moment. So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. You guys saw we did some things that might be foreign to hockey players, but we got the guys together in Bloxy and uh, everyone was uh, just together for like more team bonding and we were doing new things, adapting as athletes. And I think you saw that on our social media. You saw us doing yoga, you saw us in the pool. 
Uh, we have a great training staff and a great group of guys around us. Uh, Dr. Robbie Ellis, uh, he's on with us. He's our movement doctor and really teaching the guys how to read what their body is telling them. And, uh, you know, some of the things we're doing are very, you know, they're next level. And, uh, you know, I think most other athletes, they are seeing it, they are starting to catch on. I think the greatest example is the fighters that Robbie works with. Uh, you know, our hometown guy, our hometown champ, uh, Alan Belcher, he's amazing. He's with us almost every day. Uh, you know, bare knuckle, heavyweight world champion, Alan Belcher is with the Seawolves every day. And uh, he's not teaching the guys how to fight, he's teaching them, you know, how to, learn what Robbie is preaching because he's already bought in and you see where it's taken him. He went from retired for eight years to now back on top of the fight game and uh, you know he just bought in and it's something that most athletes it's form we're used to doing our same workouts and these are new things and uh, you know uh, our players are starting to really buy into this and I think we're seeing it in their attitudes and how uh, they're coming to the gym or coming to the rink every day and you see them start using the stuff that we're working on if it's stretches or dynamic workouts or you know even some of the weight training that we're doing because that's different too some with bands also you've seen some of it where the dumbbells are on rope so uh, I just do want to give a big shout out to uh, you know Robbie Ellis the him and Alan are down in New Mexico right now they're down at uh, John Jones Bone Jones camp down there so Hope those guys are working hard. We're here ready to get six points this weekend, but guys to look out for, obviously our player assistant, number 89, Yanni Liarakos, one of the guys wearing the A this year. He uh, He's amazing and you know, that's one guy to always keep your eye on. His line, he's got JR back with them and they got a new addition, uh, our youngest rookie, uh, Hugo. Hugo, number 93, he's going to be with those guys, and uh, he's pretty much replacing number 16. And, uh, you know, I think he's adding a lot of speed to that line. So he brings youthfulness and speed to that line, but he does have a scoring touch that reminds you of number 16. So, uh, you know, on the second line, we got some familiar faces there. So we got uh, Mr. Chuck Costello and Philip Wong and Jackson Bond. So I feel like that line has a big dynamic there, just uh, size in those first two, and Jackson with his speed and feistiness and way to just find the back of the net. Uh, so that line is gonna have a good scoring punch. And uh, you know, number three, Lucas Helen, Justin Barr, and Richard Pinkowski. You know, that's gonna be a good line with uh, Pinky and uh, Helen. So Lucas and Richie, they're gonna bring toughness to our team. They bring energy. They bring that physical presence. And uh, Barzi's with them as a leader. And Barzi really does have the scoring touch on that line. As a guy like Barr and Alan, both these guys were out of their games for you know close to a decade. And uh, Barzi made a comeback just like Alan last year. And uh, it was a phenomenal to see that. So. Uh, Barzi had a great year and we expect the same thing from our captain. So on the back end, we have uh, all familiar faces besides for uh, Mr. Tyson Lambert. I think you guys are really gonna like what you see of him. He's a big body, he moves well for a big body and he wants to be physical. And uh, that's exactly what we're looking for in that uh, hole on our defense. So uh, tonight we're, uh, you know, we're all battling in front of big Joe Shepard and uh, we're happy to have Shep back. Uh, he's looked great through camp. So uh, really the new guys, keep your eye on them, but all our returners, you know, uh, this is why they're back. You know, they're great guys, great hockey players. And we're just, uh, we're happy to be here. And we wish uh, we were playing this first game in front of you guys tonight. So uh, Wolfpack, hell yeah, we're on the hunt, let's go. Don't break the carpet, Chubb. You guys see what I mean? This is nonstop. They're just, they're bulls in a china shop out here wrecking the turf. Can't take these guys anywhere. All right, day one of training camp. Our focus today is really to focus on building a quality foundation. We're looking at revisiting a lot of the patterns associated with skating, puck handling, 
in looking at the body mechanics we want to achieve and at the level that we want to achieve them. And we're looking at building a quality movement foundation, using the efficiency of the rebounding forces of the body, getting out of a lot of square linear motion, which is also going to help us with long-term managing injuries before they occur, developing movement patterns that are actually more efficient, but also they're going to reduce the incidence of a lot of the problems you typically see throughout a season. So all in all, we want to have a team that's not only moves well, but that has the education and the understanding as to why they're doing what they're doing. And now as individuals, they can develop movement philosophy and a, a philosophy as an athlete that's going to help them be healthy, but also be highly productive on the, on the ice. Okay, you done, Yanni? Till they're done. We got five over here. One, two, three. There we go. What's that Happy Gilmore saying? 365 days till next year's hockey tryouts? Well, that's true today. 365 days till next year's hockey tryouts, boys. Woo! We never get to say that at the end of the year. Short off season. Yan sauce, where are we? I lost count. It's a little tougher. So now let's do the same thing on backwards. Nice and smooth. Just find where you don't have to rush through that transition. You're spinning the elbow in, right? Good, great. Boom. Boom. Perfect. And allow the self feel like you have, you're getting a little coiling and stretching out through the trunk, that's good. Great work. See how that brings your head over your foot? Yeah. That's, that's perfect. Essentially, you're stacking your head. If I'm stiff in the trunk and square, I'm turning, but I'm not really coiling, right? Good. Good. Now we're gonna go lateral. Right? So when I go lateral, I want to pour water out of that shoe to unweight it. Heads over weight bearing foot, right? And now I'm going to transition as I put weight onto this foot. Start here, finish here. Start here, finish here. So it's a, it's a pit. guys so as soon as we pick it up I'm gonna say ready set go here we go ready set go hey don't suck take your time I mean it's up to you how's this how's this soft enough light enough fast enough go go come on trainer hold up god damn it Yon's your turn we gotta get Yon's your turn 15 seconds. Breathe, Alex, breathe. Break, sprint, 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 sprint.
Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here. Everyone here from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A matchup here between the Zydeco and the Seawolves going head to head alongside Thomas Heffernan. Billy Gale downstairs between the glasses a moment. I'm Joseph Furtado. 1940 left to go here in this third period. The Zydeco trailing right now by one. They had the lead for the first period for all of a couple minutes, Thomas, but have trailed ever since. And pretty good period though for the Zydeco in the second. Saw a few goals from both sides, but still got to push for that extra one. What do you like to see coming up here in this third period? Uh, a lot of physical play. Bodies thrown. Turning chance, score! Parker Moskal. He Ties did what it. I was going to say. I was going to say more shots by Parker, uh, Graham. But yeah, here we go. I mean, tie game, 5-5. Five, five. Might as well be 0-0 zero, zero in my book. New period, new game right here. Well, we got Lily Gale right now between the glass. So we're going to send it downstairs to her, Lily. Thanks, Joseph. So right before the end of the second period, there was a massive fight between the Aslan twins and Lucas Helen and Kinkowski from the Seawolves. There are a few injuries down here. Adamo, I believe, one of the twins on Zydeco, has a broken nose. And Pinkowski, who has already had an injury prior to this, like two or three weeks ago, also had a huge gash on his forehead. We don't know the status of any of these injuries right now, but they're pretty minor. Joseph? Thank you for that, Lily, and for the update right now to one of the Aslan brothers. Is Speaking of updates, the Zydeco are also out with a few players entering this third period. No Curtis Hansen, and as well as Noah Robinson, both those two are out right now here, and we saw Curtis Hansen, who picked up a goal here in his first game of the year with the Baton Rouge Zydeco, making his FPHL debut, so that makes things a little bit harder right now, Thomas, for the Zydeco on offense. Uh, it shortens the bench a little bit, but I think it puts guys in a more of a position to have an opportunity to show themselves. So it's very disappointing the league couldn't get it together and get their information in and whatnot and process these guys in. But uh, it is what it is, and we're just going to have to deal with it. But the guys are willing to step up and do what they have to do to get the win. Yeah, as well as Don Carter, who is still out there, though. He did join the team earlier this week, but he still remains out there right now as... 
Weber lost the handle that time to Turner. This one slipped back ahead, and on the move, here come the Seawolves with a twisting shot that time off the stick of Bond. Jumping onto it now is Chirac with it. Picked up an assist on the goal earlier. Comes back around, and Askins trying to pursue the puck. Cycled in back downstairs, try to force it back in front, and allows MJ Graham. Here he comes, one on two, has some speed. He'll take it to the outside. Graham step in, and that time just pushed it wide. What a move by MJ Graham, showing his speed. Something they miss right now with no Marquise Grant Mentis. He's out of the lineup and has been for the last couple games. Yeah, Graham's definitely stepping up, though, with the speed. He's pushing hard and looking for a penalty there and didn't get any. No love, but, you know, it's got to get up and keep grinding. Here comes Bond. He'll cruise his way to the middle off the drop-off, heading towards the front. Bond taken around behind right now by Irakos. Sent back to the point and a steal and maybe a 2 on 0 if the Zydeco can hurry. Shot and a save that time by Shepard. Moscow looking for his second, fires another shot that time, trying to find the rebound in front. It squirts loose. Hussey tried to guide it out. Now here come the Seawolves back the other way, and things will settle down here a little bit as Rogers trying to get there. Well, that was one of the Aslan twins right now to get back on, and that's David Aslan behind his own net. Up the far side boards and a touch pass through center. Weber now from Moscow. Weber firing that time, and a blocker save made by Shepard. Out come the Seawolves back out the other way in transition. This way for Turner. He'll take it into the corner until he's met by a hard shoulder check that time by Weber. Do the far side and on the move. And it's on the money now again for Weber. Down the right side one more time. He'll take it looking, beating one that time over the top of the cage. Bouncing puck settled down here by Carter and he's ran in too hard and comes back down deep below the goal line. Weber tried to thread that little corner right there. Hard check, too, that time as Russell goes down to the ice. Fans like what they're seeing right now from the Zydeco offense. Towards the middle, Laporte tried the shot. Blocked in front. Wong might have caught a piece of that one as four minutes gone by here in this first frame. Two-line stretch pass ahead. Here comes Chirac motoring his way back on through. Lays it off to the outside, and nothing doing that time in front of the rebound. Jumped on and trying to get to it. And able to hang on is Shepard. The Zydeco right now starting this period out to 41 shots right now and pushing, trying to take the go-ahead lead after the goal from Parker Moskal. Attacking zone face off here for the Zydeco. They get control in Moscow. Gonna work this one back down low. Moscow goals in his last three straight games. Looking for his fourth of the year. Gonna come back in on the half wall. This brings it down low for MJ Graham. Graham who had that really good opportunity just a few minutes ago. Moscow. Works it free, straight down low to Graham. Tried the shot from a tough angle, comes around the other side, and that time it just took a deflection right off the skate of Hussey. That would have been his second tonight, but a good read that time from Aslan. Here he comes. Now for Rogers. Rogers firing rebound back out to the point. Settling it down here is Aslan and couldn't quite handle it. The Seawolves trying to bank this one back out up the ice. Mississippi right now with 25 shots on net, and that time a save made by Hussey with 14.54 left to go right now here in this third period. An even score. Ten goals in this game, five aside. We're going to step aside as well. Don't go anywhere. Back in a moment after this. So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair.
Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Friday night hockey. The fourth game of the year for the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Starting out their regular season, 0-3 after three straight losses to the Columbus River Dragons and on the other end for Mississippi. 2-1-1 one one on the season, looking to avoid dropping two straight. The Zydeco are the only team right now here in the FPHL who do not have a win right now in the regular season. And a chance to kind of look at here the FPHL Continental Division right now and a nice look at things. The River Dragons, Thomas, 3-0 after sweeping the Zydeco. And you have Baton Rouge right at the bottom of the screen, 0-3. And, and like I said, looking to pick up three points tonight in a tough division right now in the Continental Division. Yeah, but uh, it's looking good right now. I mean, they're playing well and uh, actually more than well. They're playing as best as they can, and it's looking great. Like, it's going to work out here. They're going to win this period and uh, take the night. One of the things you mentioned, though, is, is putting on more shots. One of the things you wanted to see, getting more shots on net, and they have been doing that almost at 50, about 43 right now here in this game, and you can see five goals to show from it. As the Zydeco able to work it to center ice, Chirac in an area pass on the money now for Rogers over across the attacking line. Rogers firing just over the top of the net. Rising chance, came back around the boards. Keep here by the Zydeco, Chirac, no look behind the net pass, and now Wong will follow up on it. Eads it out to center ice, and Bond now. Tape the tape over on the far side. Here come the Seawolves, cutting back in across the middle, and now with a hard shoulder check that time in front was Bush Anderson. Dropping back from Don Carter to reset things here, 1347 left to go, played into a Open area and the Seawolves that time on the turnover. They'll dump it in down low. Gonna work it out of the corner. Rogers tangled up, has to soccer it along to the far side. Good centering feed in front, and Hussey that time made the save. The puck was loose. Official blew his whistle, and that'll sell it up an attacking zone faceoff. Now the officials talking some things over right now with a couple of the players. Hussey also getting in there too as well, coming out of his goal crease right now, and a little extra in front right now. A couple of the players going at it, and Thomas, we didn't see too many fights from the Zydeco in their first opening three games. A pretty disciplined team. Right now only 22 penalty minutes entering tonight's contest. One of the lower penalized teams in the FPHL, but tonight we've already seen a couple fights and penalties. Oh yeah, it's not over. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna see more. You got Lucas Helen, it looks like he's about to jump out right now. And uh, these guys are just looking to fight, it looks like. Yeah, Hussey right now are gonna take a seat inside the penalty box, so it, he's still taking a seat, but work all of this out right now. So it's going to be a power play right now here for the Seawolves. So there's a shot score. Couldn't set up any better for the Seawolves on the power play. That was a tough break. Great setup, fast pass, and nothing you can do. Just gotta stay out of the box. We gotta play more discipline here. Continue to get the shots, get the puck down deep. Now we just gotta play physical, just throw it at him. Looks like that came off the stick of Lyra Rocco's. So just like that, it's now a six to five lead here for Mississippi in this back and forth contest. Mississippi, their 28th shot, they find their sixth of the game. And 
Masahiro came into this contest an 0-1-1 record, only five goals against. He's now given up six in this game alone. And a 9.02 save percentage coming into the night with a 5.00 goals against average. And now the Zydeco trail again here, six to five. Do they have another one here as we approach the midway mark of this third period? 13 minutes left to go on the outside here for Wong. Drops the shoulder, he'll come back out, hit the brakes. As he battles down low with Hussey, wraparound try. And just got away from him. It allows Chirac to step his way back on out. Chirac out to the right. He'll take a look over his left shoulder. Chirac taken down. No penalty. Play will continue. Out to the point drive that time by Aslan. Following up now here. And putting that one back on net. So the two Aslan brothers now back on the ice after their fight earlier back in the second period. And Back out there right now with 12.34 left to go here in the third period. Zydeco just taking a look at them coming into tonight's matchup. They only have three third period goals. So far to show this season, they've given up five in the third. Now for the Seawolves coming into, they have five third period goals. They've given up six in the third so far throughout their First four games out to the point. Aslan tees one up and has that one turned away off. The right leg of Shepard kicks it back out and on out now here for Licio. Trying to push that one back in front. Instead now away for MJ Graham. Backhand dish towards the middle. Moscow. One more time on the near side. Kara Georges. We'll take it around the wagon and feed this one out. Looking to the point. Able to hold the line, and this one took a deflection all the way from the far side, made its way this time over the glass. And we'll get a whistle here with 12.03 left to go. So another attacking zone face off with Thomas. You know, just drawing comparison from the first three games with the Zydeco, a much different showing out here tonight that this team finally got some time to practice together, work things out, and you know they came into last week only being together for just about two weeks, and some of the guys, it was just their first time being in the building, and now you see what that difference has made here tonight. Yeah, definitely, and I mean, the practices have been really, really high tempo. Guys have been really getting on each other to focus and uh, make the right plays, and uh, everything has been focused on tape-to-tape -tape passing. Turner dropping back inside his own net, retreating and feeding this one back up the boards and out through center ice. Here come the Seawolves back on the move. Koch with it, puts a backhander on net, and that time it's eaten up by Hussey. To hang on with 11.23. Left to go here in the third period. Zydeco still 0 for 13 coming into this game on the power play. Unsuccessful tonight. We haven't seen any power plays for the Zydeco in this third period. Just joining us here on WBRZ alongside Thomas Heffernan. Billy Gale downstairs. I'm Joseph Furtado. Glad you're with us. Joachim Nilsson had the last goal here in this. Rather, excuse me, it was Yarnley Rakos with the last goal here in this third period to give the River Dragons the lead as it's dumped all the way back in, slowed up here by Carter. He'll double on back inside his own zone and forced to move the puck out for Moscow. He'll angle this one in hopes of Graham and that was knocked down. Weber through the middle, can't drag his way on by. It's cut off that time by Wong. He'll twist it this way along the near side. Across the blue line in on side, that shot died down through the traffic and kicked off the boards ahead for Graham. Looking to get started as he clears one over across. Here come the Zydeco back in shot, score! His second tonight, Parker Moscow ties it. Thomas, you asked him to shoot more a little bit, and now in his last two shots, he has goals here in this third period. He's got to fire the puck. You'll miss 100% of the sh shots you don't take. All right, Gretzky. So 
So almost at the halfway mark of period number three, the Zydeco break even at six. We've seen 12 goals so far here in this game, and Parker Moskal has been riding now a three-game point streak, has goals in each of his games, as now two tonight. A fan favorite. You got to think if he gets one more, gets the hat trick, he's going to bring this building down. On the turnover, try to feed that one through the middle. Kara George just winds up with it. We'll turn it around behind the near side boards on it. Chirac trying to guide his way back on out and cruising to center. On the move, here comes Chirac. Dropping off now, Hussey in stride and puts that one just wide. Kara George is turning one back on from a tough angle and that one caught the glass and into the mesh. So allows us to get a stoppage in play right now. 9.44 left to go, a TV timeout. We're gonna step aside. Don't go anywhere here on WBRZ and YouTube Live. Inside the Raisin Canes River Center. Third period, 9.44 left to go. Just halfway through this third frame in a 6-6 game right now between the Zydeco and the Seawolves. Mississippi trying to avoid dropping right now. Two straight games. This one pushed back out in front of the high slot and Hussey with that right leg extending and clears it all the way back down as for the Zydeco. Try to pick up their first win. The only team in the FPHL who does not have a point. Trying to avoid dropping four straight for them as now Moskal, who has the last two, throws that one off the pillows and it's kicked around deep one more time. Here's a shot that time from Laporte. Had that blocked and carried across here by the Seawolves. Three across for them as they enter the attacking zone. Back down low and into the back of the net. Lyrakos with the goal and the go-ahead lead for the Seawolves late in this third period, 8.57. If you don't get a stick on it, I mean, that's easy. He didn't even move. He just kept his stick on the ice and uh, was able to tap it in. The defense has got to, got to punch down on that. They cannot let these guys walk in through it. So he went, walked through our center so easy. Anything between those hash marks needs to be shut down. So 8.57 now remaining here in this third period. The Seawolves again recapture the lead. So the 13th goal of the game. High scoring game here tonight. No shortage of offense from either side. Right, it comes the center ice, and here comes Chirac. And we're going to get another penalty here. It'll be a holding call. It's going to be against the Zydeco. 
Austin and Weber going to take a seat inside the penalty box. Two minutes for a hold, so a power play chance again here for the Seawolves and a chance to extend the lead to two. So they play clutch and grab all game, and then now the ref decides to call it. Great. Can't say that was a good choice on Weber's part to hold on as much as he did, but, you know, he's got no stick. He's fighting in there. It's a tough break, but here we got the penalty kill, and these guys uh, looking like they'll be able to kill the penalty. The Zydeco at 71.4% entering on their power play. Got 8.20 left to go here in the third period. Here's a shot that time. Kicked back onto the corner. Juan. Gonna work it around the near side boards up the kick plate. Back out to the top of the point for Turner. We'll work it along. Costello. On the touch pass, Turner over across, trying to push that one into the middle, and jumping on it here is Laporte. So let's feed this one back on out to center ice, down to a minute 13 left to go here on the power play for the Seawolves, trying to angle it back in. Wong on the drop back. Yorakos back for it, and Hilda's twisting along out to center for Russell. Russell getting it started up the boards. Yorakos again carries it back inside the zone. He'll take a look and try to force that one across. Russell this way on the exchange. Trying to send it down low. And now cleared all the way back on down the ice, 200 feet by Hussey and forcing the Seagulls back to reset. And a 32 seconds left to go on the power play until Austin Weber comes back out of the box. Angled right back into the corner, swept back out up high to the point. Lee Rocco sending that one on, and now Haskins, the former Seawolf, trying to pound this out to center, and it reaches center and all the way down the ice. One last push here on the power play as Shepard plays it onto the far side. MJ Graham back in on the forward check, killing off the last seconds here of this penalty. And now back out to even strength as Weber comes back out of the box, and we're back at even. Asking on the dump in, trying to turn back up the boards, lost his footing for a moment. And tries to push it up the boards, and now out come the Zydeco, able to escape two on two. Here comes Chirac, shifting his way back in, lets a wrister go, and as that one turned aside off the right shoulder of Shepard. Askin set on the table one more time. Cleared back in by Chirac. Slowed up here behind the cage by Shepard. They'll twist it back onto the near corner. On it comes now here for Licio to bring it back in. He'll dump it back on. Get back on after it. Aslan behind the net. And he'll look to try to spring Moscow ahead. Moscow on the touch pass. Overlays one back out. And here come the Zydeco. Trying to drag it through his legs. That time was Laporte trying to force it in front. The rebound jumped aside. Moscow. It's a great play. Through the legs, backhand, put it on net. Almost got the rebound there. Moscow trying to pick it up, and this one just forked all the way back down the ice. Coming down to the single digit numbers here in the back end of this third period. Five and some change remaining. Time becoming a factor right now for the Zydeco, who trail by one in this third period. The last goal coming from. Mississippi. Yanni Liarakos with the last goal to give Mississippi the late lead. The Zydeco only held the lead back in the first period for all of a couple minutes, and since then it's been the Seawolves in front. Here's a drop back again. Liarakos trying to send that one towards the cage and just out of the reach that time of Nielsen. Now on the move, here comes Kara Georges. Had his first FPHL goal tonight, who opened the scoring. He'll stop up on a dime, lay it back to Graham, and swings that one wide of the net. Here's a dish back out to the point. Carter with a try, and deflects back on out to center ice. Graham tried to hustle to it to keep it in, couldn't quite get there, and down it comes. Down with 4.30 now left to go, back for icing. Just have to think, though, Thomas, right now. And, you know, we saw the start that the Zydeco had. They brought in a few players, too, and, and 
Curtis Hansen and also Noah Robinson, but now unable to play here the rest of this game, and it's been tough going down the stretch here. You gotta think you miss a guy too like Curtis Hansen. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienville Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking. And uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. Any goal, any way. They don't ask how, they ask how many. They so in this case, you just got to bury it. And they seem to be leaning a little bit on Parker Moskal. He has the last two goals for the Zydeco. And you know, one of the things you mentioned, Thomas, to start shooting the puck. You got to shoot the puck to score goals. And he started doing that. And right on cue, as you will, picked up one. And this team could use one right now down here in this game, seven to six for the Seawolves. Mississippi last season were 17, 35, four and four. They had 51 points on the regular season. And a team right now starting two, one and one on the year. A turnover, Hussey that time, answering at the rebound, back out in front and cleared back onto the corner. That was a nice uh, block there by Rogers. Way to get down and block that shot. So now here comes MJ Graham. Starting on from center with speed, taking it across the attacking line. Angling his way back on through, puts one back in. Kara Georges sees that one get away from him. Out for Haskins. Downstairs again, Kara Georges, and this is gonna wind back up Onto Shepard with 3.47 left to go. So time still becoming a factor here in this game. Zydeco team pushing here for the late goal. Mississippi just going back how we got here. They scored three goals in the first period. The Zydeco who opened the scoring back in the first period on the goal from Kara Georges. And the Mississippi answer with three straight goals from there. We saw two in the second from each team and now two in the third as well from both these teams, but still in favor right now of the Seawolves. Shots are 50 to 33. In favor here of the Zydeco, but they trail right now by one as this puck bleeds all the way back on out to center ice. Zydeco have it, they'll toss this one back into an open corner, try to establish a four check with Moscow back in, first one there. Hussey sealing off the boards, he'll step back off the wall, Hussey. Lost inside the skates, trying to work his way towards the high slot. Spun back off the boards by Cudmore. Tossed all the way back in on net and handled that time by Hussey, who was able to make the save and hang on. Fans, don't forget to check out the fight of the night brought to you by Hungry House Pizza. Check out our social media. Zydeco change personnel back out on the ice as the Moscow unit heads back off. Be in a defensive zone draw. Kara George is set to take it. He'll line in right now with Helen. All of the glove hand side right now. Hussey and Helen wins it clean back. From a sharp angle that time, it took a deflection back off the side of the cage and back below the trapezoid. Looking for some room. This one spun all the way back in behind the nets. On it here is Aslan. They'll have to step back out, and the Zydeco trying to start their breakout. Might have touched off the stick of Weber. No, it's going to come back down for an icing call. Well, we go down the final stretch here in this third period. But make sure you join us next week right here on WBRZ and YouTube Live. 
The Baton Rouge Zydeco will be back at it again for another three-game homestand with the Columbus River Dragons. Game one will be right here on November 8th at 7.30 p.m. You can watch the games on WBRZ and right here again on YouTube Live as that is gloved down by us. He's able to hang on. So we'll see another attacking zone faceoff for the Seawolves. It'll set up again on the same side. Draw one clean on back here for the Seawolves to take over. That shot clears back out to the near side. Mississippi having to control right now, trying to cycle this one back down low. Aslan trying to get back on it, turn the puck over, gave it away. Helen looking for an opportunity. Reaching in there is Ademo Aslan. Two twins on the ice right now. This one. Push back ahead for Weber, finds his way out across the blue line, snaps across now for Graham. Graham looking, try to feed that one back door, and this one popped again over the top. Angled back out to center ice. Haven't seen too much of Cody Rogers right now here in this third period. He'll work his way back in though right now. Nice moves by Rogers, shooting and putting that one over the top of the net. Here comes Carter looking, fires that one out. The rebound turned aside and Able to guide this one back as far as center. And now out come the Seawolves with some speed ahead into the zone. But a nice pickpocket on the back check from Carter to get back to break it up. And he sides, steps one man and comes back on the move. Carter looking. He'll take it around behind. Down to a minute 30 left to go here in this third period. The Zydeco looking for the extra one. This one swung back across. Hussey to the bench for the extra man. Out to center ice it comes. Looking for the empty net. And this one fired right back into Rogers. Here comes Chirac. He'll work his way back on out. Six on five right now for the Zydeco. Chirac working his way in that time and a save made. By Shepard who hangs on. So a really good opportunity that time. It could not set up any better again for Shepard. That's the second opportunity we saw Thomas for him tonight and has been shut down by Shepard on both times and by the same pad. Yeah, that was a tough save. I mean, oh, Sharon was coming through with speed. Thought he had it, but uh, the goalie is definitely uh, on top of that play. Rogers back on for it, then Sharon one more time. Final minute to go here. In this third period, the Zydeco trying to push for overtime with a void dropping four straight. Rogers just lost the handle. Long from center ice, gonna play this one back down. So Carter, here he comes on the move. Across center ice and into the attacking zone. And offsides right now is the call with 38.4 left to go in this hockey game. So a win tonight for the Seawolves, that'll put them at three, one and one on the season after coming off an overtime loss against Port Huron last week. Nine points on the regular season, but for the Zydeco, and I'll move them down to 0-4 and a team who's still looking for their first win in the FPHO. Still the only winless team right now. Moscow walk his way back in, send that one back on through traffic and able to hang on to that is Shepard. Shepard, who enters his fourth season in the FPHL. A 21-16-0-1 record. And right now trying to add to that as another attacking zone face-off here for the Zydeco. Graham and Wong line in for it. A tie-up fair. Chirac turning chance that time. Surprising Shepard. The Seawolves trying to get it to center ice, and they will do just that. Looking for the empty net here if they can get it, and that one just pushed aside. Nice stick handling, though, that time from Turner. Final 15 left to go. Zydeco trying to get it ahead. Love down go. here by One Aslin. Steps over the blue line. And no offsides here as it's tucked back onto the corner. Two seconds and one. And that is going to do it here from Baton Rouge. The Seawolves escape with a 7-6 to six victory over the Baton Rouge Zydeco. The Seawolves advance to 3-1-1 one one on the year. 
The Zydeco now drop their fourth straight and still remain the only winless team in the FPHL. Yeah, it's a tough break. I mean, these guys have worked really hard all week and uh, we'll continue to throughout next week, but uh, they aren't done. These guys have definitely been building a chemistry that you can see it's chemistry is building and it's getting uh, stronger and their bond is becoming tighter. So uh, I would just be uh, be fortunate and keep, uh, keep the faith, y'all. Yeah, the salute out from center ice by the home team as they exit the ice, but a much different look though, Thomas, from last week to this week on this team who kept up with arguably one of the best teams in the FPHL, if not the best team in the Columbus River Dragons, but you know they seem to clean up a lot of the sloppy play here going into this game. And you know, a team who struggled with scoring goals and offense did not struggle here tonight. They put up six in a much better game overall as a team. Definitely, the passes, passes were tape to tape in spaces where uh, the forward was moving to, and it was just a couple of unlucky breaks with the defense and uh, and some of the offense not covering some of the point and uh, forwards coming in uh, supporting the offense. Well with, that, well, with that being said, we say hello and welcome you here inside the broadcast booth alongside Thomas Heffernan. I'm Joseph Hurtado. Well, Thomas, a team right now, they dropped their last four straight games, and now things don't get any easier for the Zydeco team. Now they got to welcome back the Columbus River Dragons, a team they lost four straight or three straight games to. What has to change now going into this game? Uh, I really don't think anything has to change other than just doing what they're continuing to do, working hard and practicing and uh, not just going through the motions, but actually just keeping high tempo and playing to their game and uh, hearing what coach has to, uh, has to say and allowing them to, uh, to also, they've got to buy into the program that coach is trying to sell and it's, uh, it's got to happen like that and everyone's got to be on the same page. And we're seeing it happen day by day. So how about the power play though? We watched this team again. They came in over 13 tonight on the power play. They really struggled their first three games. And then they come in here again tonight, have a five on three and a few more power play chances, but still unable to get anything. No power play goals and almost an 0 for 20 on the season. So the lowest power play right now in the team or in the league, I should say, and trying to get things done. So what's got to change there? Uh, well, I would say definitely just work the puck down low more. Uh, it, it's just got to be a lot more, uh, more, more communication. Uh, they got to trust each other. And I would say I would like to see a lot more shooting. More shots would be best.